Hi, welcome to another podcast. Today we're discussing our favourite movie lines and popular movie lines in general. So if you're travelling to work or just need some company with whatever you're doing, thanks for joining us and how about hit that like button and that subscribe button. That would really help out the channel. Anyway, enough said, let us begin. So the frog, we're back. I've given you our... Our brief. Uh, yeah, the brief of what we're going to talk about, and I put it up on the community section. Movie lines. Great movie lines. Now, I wanted you to go away, pick five lines that you really like. Yep. I'll do my five. Yep. And then, when we were looking this up, when we were looking at great movie lines, there were hundreds. This is so... Subjective. So subjective. You're right. And there's just too many what you think would be number one but at the end of this we'll have five you know that we think are really popular that people would know and then we'll have some honorable mentions exactly but there's so many movie lines that have been great and we're not going to be able to mention all of them because we'll be here all night otherwise however let's get things underway you ready for this i'm ready i I am (laughs) i'm eager to know what you've picked for your five so we'll do five each, and then five great movie lines, and we'll go from there. Yeah. Okay. So, the year is year 2000. One of my favourite lines delivered is Ridley Scott's Gladiator. When Russell Crowe takes off his helmet. Will you remove your helmet and tell me your name? Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. You get the line. Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. It's brilliant and delivered so well. I love it. I absolutely love it. And you can see the Commodore's face. He's like, shit, I was supposed to execute this guy. He's still alive and Maximus is going to get his revenge. He's being betrayed, so he's going to do whatever he he can. And, or even speaks back to the Commodore. And I I just think it's unreal line. And that's why I like it, because it's delivered so well. He wins over the people and it sets up more. You know, you want more. Yeah. You want more, like, okay, how, how's this going to play out? And I just think it's a great line. Brilliant. All right, go. One of your My first personal pick. Uh-huh. The year was 1987. The director was John McTiernan, and the movie is Predator. Arnold Schwarzenegger, if it bleeds, we, we can, can kill, kill it. it. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Right. Now, right. why was this so memorable? So, in the broader context of the film, which is one of underlying fear and the unknown, struggling against an opponent that can't be seen, let alone defeated, this scene leveraged from despair to a glimmer of optimism. Maybe someone will get out of this alive. Yes, I remember seeing that. And I remember seeing that fluorescent green yeah. blood. You know what? When I saw that when I was a kid, I thought, that looks like my shampoo. <laughs> and I thought, well, <laughs> But you're right. There's a, a glimmer of hope that they might be able to do this. And it's not human, but it's that logical approach. That, exactly. Okay, this thing has been injured and it probably can't last forever, so... And this line had such a profound effect that in 2001, round 10 of the AFL, Lee Matthews, who was the coach of the Brisbane Lions, said to his team about my team, Essendon, Mm. if it bleeds, we can kill it. At that point in time, Essendon were untouchable. Oh my goodness. And Lee Matthews delivered that line from Predator and the Brisbane Lions beat Essendon. Okay. <laughs> I, did, I did not know that. All right. Here's my number two. You ready? Go for it. 
It's not a line where the line's been said and gives you a bit of hope or like, oh, that's brilliant. That's br-. This line has kind of the opposite effect to me. Okay. And it kind of got me a bit like, oh, that's actually... But it's still good. And we've talked about this, so it's going to have some memories. We've talked about it in another podcast. And it's James Cameron's Terminator 2. Okay? Yep. And it's when John Connor says to the Terminator, we're not going to make it, are we? In terms of people. The line is... It's in your nature to destroy yourselves. It's in your nature to destroy yourselves. And that line, why I like it for me, why it resonates. You know, this day and age with AI becoming more and more a thing and they're trying to put some boundaries in with AI and the rapid improvement in AI, I just feel like that line really resonates quite a bit now. And in the movie, it's kind of letting John Connor know, well, is the future inevitable? Are we going to destroy ourselves no matter what I do here? Or are we just delaying the inevitable? Or I, I just, when I watched it again, I went, oh man, that's, that's a great line because it is a bit, if we're not careful, that could happen. Precisely. It's at the end of the day, that's where it's for me. And you've read my mind because that's on my list. No way. And you've said almost exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. So that's perfect. That okay. is absolutely perfect. Okay. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I couldn't have said it better. Very okay. good. So that agree with everything. Well, <laughs> you might as well skip that one. All right, go go for your. I go off. for my next one. Yeah. Okay, nineteen ninety four. Nineteen ninety four. A lot of action movies in the nineties. There were. So this director one. Quentin Tarantino. Was it Dust Till Dawn? The movie is Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. Yep. So, Samuel <laughs> L. Jackson being himself, as only Samuel can do this. Oh, the great Samuel L. Jackson. The great Samuel L. Jackson. He's amazing. Delivers this line, which I love. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. Ezekiel twenty-five seventeen. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides oh. by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of the darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon you. Is that the scene? It's a very powerful scene. It is. The line is delivered. I mean, As Samuel... Only Samuel, Samuel can do yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. And he, he's amazing. Is that the scene where they've got a gentleman in the chair? Yeah. Okay. It's been so long since I've seen that movie. That's exactly yeah. where it is. And it was delivered with such gravitas. It was emotional. It was evocative. And I just can't think of anyone else who would have delivered. Okay, it's not a line per se, it's a passage. Yeah. But I can't think of anyone else that would have delivered it with the same passion. Yes. Yeah, he, he, yeah I agree. And it was great. I haven't seen that movie such a long time. So, okay, I'll go to my next one. Actually, James Cameron made it onto my list twice. Ooh, okay. James Cameron's 1986 film... Aliens. 
Now, could you imagine which line it would be? Oh, there are too many. There are too many good lines. So near the end. You know when Ripley get saves away Newt. From her. That's it. Get away from her, you bitch. Yeah. And I should have known. <laughs> I just think that's great. And before I used to go, uh, you know, I used to be, do a bit of an eye roll, like uh, whatever. When I watched the movie again recently, you know, when we were talking about our favourite science fiction films, and we both agreed Aliens is one of the best 80s science fiction films, I rewatched the movie, and the reason I really like that scene now, so when she goes to save Newt, she tilts her head, and she's like, no, I'm not going to let you get away with this. You've given me enough PTSD and trauma. Starts blasting the nest. Grabs Newt, gets out of there. So they're back on the actual ship. And Newt's in trouble again. Why I really like it. Here we go. She's lost her daughter. She's not going to lose Newt again because she's treating her like a daughter. And she's going to do whatever she's got to do to save her. And she's got this newfound kind of confidence. She's got this newfound confidence and she's going to do whatever it takes to get rid of this queen alien and she's kind of like got over her PTSD like she's confronted her fears face on and that line for me resonates even more now like get away from her you bitch this is going to be dealt with today and I love it I think yeah. I love it too. And so, as you said at the start, there are so many good lines and we can't have all of them, but that will be on my short list. Yep. For sure. Yep. So, yeah. Very okay. good. What's your next? <clears throat> my next one, 2002. 2002. Director Sam Raimi. <sighs> Spider-Man. Oh, oh, Tobey Maguire. Kirsten Dunst. So, James the Franco. line... The that we're after is remember with great power comes great responsibility Uncle Ben Parker oh the, the most with, famous line exactly with great <laughs> power comes great responsibility what a line now why was this so memorable for me the first reason it was so memorable is that it was taken directly from a comic that I had as a child. And this instantly, when I heard it, it instantly teleported me back to my childhood. Nostalgia. It, exactly. It was nostalgia. So it resonated really, really highly with me. But the second reason, just as important, is that for me, the immortal words that anyone, anywhere, who has any kind of yes. power yeah. does he need to possess the greatest of responsibility and display leadership characteristics that other people can look up to and feel inspired by. It's an inspirational statement mm -hmm. and it's stuck with me. Yeah. It's very, a great very thing. powerful. It is. And I know you had this shortlisted. Yeah. <laughs> I you're right. I did have it shortlisted, and then I went, oh. You oh. can't have everything. No, that's right. And then I went, oh, I really like it. And then I took it off. Which is good, because yeah. now I get to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, great, great scene. I am being meaning to go back and watch all those uh, Sam Raimi Spider. One of our other podcasts, I said, I didn't mind Spider-Man 3, and you're like, eh. It was a bit disappointing, but I said it had grown on me. Yeah, exactly. And as I said, I was trying to create perspective. <clears throat> Not that the movie, the movie was bad in its own right, yeah, yeah. but compared to the others, which you have Spider to do. Spider-Man 2 was a tough one to yeah. top. It's kind of considered one of the best sequels around. Exactly. So, okay, I'm going to go to my next one. Go for it. And it's the lead up to this line. And when I watch this and I see it, <clears throat> my arms go like spaghetti, my... <laughs> <laughs> you know, the hairs on my arm, ding, and I get like this tingly feeling, and I'm like, ah. Oh. And Back to the Future 2, okay, Robert Zemeckis, 1989 film, Back to the Future 2, 
And near the end, Doc gets zapped by lightning. Yes. Then that delivery man turns up. Because we've been holding on to this letter. I think it's like 70 years or something. Yeah. And Marty reads it. And he goes, that's the Doc. And, you know, reads it. And the delivery man says, do do you need any help? You need any help? And he goes, there's only one man who can help me. And he runs, runs back. And that music, it starts, the orchestra from, goodness, Alan Silvestri. Yeah. It's great. And Marty runs around the corner and Doc screams. He goes, ah, I just sent you back. He goes, I know you did. I know you did. But I'm back from the future. Oh. <laughs> gets me every time. I can watch that and it gets me every time. Okay, relax, Doc. It's me. It's me. It's Martin. No, oh, it can't be. Just sent you back to the future. Yeah. Oh, I know. You did send me back to the future, but I'm back. I'm back from the future. It gets me every time. The hairs on my arm. I go all spaghetti-like. And, I, I'm like, and it's it. different for all people, and if that works for you... <laughs> it does, and... I love it. I just think it's great. And then, you know, Doc says, great, Scott, and falls over. But I just think it's so good because, and this is why I like it. You know, they've just destroyed the almanac. Was it the, I pronounced yeah. that wrong. The, the almanac. Yeah. yeah. And when you're still messing with time, you know, things are still going wrong. And, but Marty knows that, hold on, I, I, I can still... Things could somehow be fixed. Somehow we can do this. And they're in that same timeline again. The clock tower. (laughs) Which, it's brilliant. You know, it's the one movie. You don't have to remake this movie. I don't want to see a remake. I mean, if they do, that's fair enough. But the movie holds up still. And I love watching it. And I, yeah, I just really like that. I won't keep going on, but I really like that line. So, Very good. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay. Uh, For my next film, we have to go all the way back to 1939. What the heck? You said it. <laughs> Director Victor Fleming. Oh, it... And the movie is The Wizard of Oz. Well, I have seen it. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> so, Dorothy Gale delivers the line, Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas, Kansas anymore. anymore. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Now, why was this so memorable? This was one of the very first films that I can actually remember as a child. Mm. Not that I was a child in 39, but you know the point I'm trying to make. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And through the lens of today, the film may seem a little trite compared to what is on offer. However, it was a wondrous form of escapism. The start's in black and white. And it goes through. She goes through and then it's colour, isn't it? Exactly. That's it. Jesus, it's been that long. I I think, I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Anyway, sorry, go. Yeah, so it was escapist for a child at the the time. And whenever I read it or hear it these days, to semi-quote, if I can, the mighty band Noiseworks, it takes me back to the innocence of youth once again. Anymore. And that, that's been... It's that, been parodied. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. So much. And it still gets used to this day. Yeah. Yeah, wow. I didn't think that was... Okay, I was I not expecting that. I thought I'd end on something really nostalgic because a, a few of mine might have seemed a little serious. <laughs> bordering on no, preachy. Doesn't doesn't matter because that's um you know the lines that you like. Okay, so my last and one of my most favourite, and I'm still gonna laugh because I still find it really funny, is a 1994 film. Yep. The Farrelly Brothers. Is that how I pronounce their last name? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Just making sure. Dumb and Dumber. 
<laughs> oh, dumb and dumber. There were so many good lines in there. Yeah, and the scene, they're driving to Aspen. Yeah. And they realise they're going the wrong way. And then they have their tip and fight. Well, they're in the van. And <laughs> so they have their tip. And then he, you know, catches up with Harry on that little scooter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, um, you know, he says, <laughs> he goes, where did you get that? <laughs> I traded. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still up. Anyway, I'm not even going to, but he goes, traded the van for it straight up. You know, Lloyd, just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! He <laughs> 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 tells him what he's done. He's traded the band. <laughs> Especially when you're about to go to a cold climate. Exactly. <laughs> and <laughs> you do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it still gets me. And the reason I like it, for a split second there, for a split second there, I thought, oh, Harry's... You know, he's, yeah. he's going to catch Lloyd out. You know, they're both going to come to their senses a little bit. I I don't know. But it, it just worked. And the way Jeff delivers that line. <laughs> like, you know, Lloyd. <laughs> just when you thought I could I, I still laugh at it. I think it's just brilliant. And I really love that line and that scene. And, yeah, the movie itself has got so many, like, Little it's got too it. many funny yeah. lines. And it's a movie I don't mind watching, like having a bit of a gap, so the funny bits don't become like, uh, so, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's my five. And my five. So we had, oh yes, so we had our five that we thought were really, we agreed on that were probably most people would know these. That's right. So... I'll start with no particular order. Oh, maybe the, the last one I reckon might just be, might, happy to be wrong, probably the most popular movie line of all time. I've got a feeling it's going to be the greatest movie line of all time. Yeah. So. None, and not subjective. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bond. James Bond. Yes. I admire your luck, Mr... Bond. James Bond. 1962, directed by Terence Young, the first in the Bond franchise. Mm. James Bond. The second Clint Eastwood film. Go ahead. Make my day. Uh, which film was this one from? Do you have that on your... Yeah, so the movie we're talking about is 1983's Sudden Impact. I knew you would have it. Which was directed by Clint Eastwood. Did he direct it as well? He directed it as well. Right. So it was the fourth in the Dirty Harry franchise. Very popular. You don't... I haven't even seen the movie, but I know the line. And that's what makes the line so popular. And why these general five... You <clears> don't even have to have seen the movie. You know it's from a movie line or it's popular. Do you want to know how popular that line is? Such was the pop culture impact of the quote that during his speech at the 1985 American Business Conference, President Ronald Reagan himself, a former actor, stated, I have veto pin drawn and ready for tax increases that Congress might think of sending up, and I've only got one thing to say to tax increases. Go ahead. Make my day. Wow. So the president himself knows the line. <laughs> you know, when I was in primary school, we used to say, go ahead, make my bed. <laughs> That's terrible. It's terrible, I know. Anyway. Um, now, this one from Star Wars. Yep. Empire Strikes Back. Yep. Now, a lot of people might think, may the force be with you. Which it's, is a great line as well. It's a great line. Fairly popular. But I think this has been... Parodied. Parodied more of other movies. The line is, No, I am your father. I am 
single father. I know. What a great line. Mark Hamill had to keep that secret from the rest of the cast. George Lucas and said, keep it under your hat. Yeah, what a line. Well, it's a massive, and I mean massive, plot twist. It is. Completely redirecting the viewer's attention from what was going on. Mm. It's like, where did that one come from? And Luke says, no! And you search your feelings. And you know it to be true, or something like that. Yeah. Like, you know, dinner conversations might be a bit awkward. Yeah, when he has his father over for dinner, you know, I'm sure Luke and Darth. <laughs> at, 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 <laughs> you know, first kind of couple of dinners might be a bit. You know, we just got to smooth things over again. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my watching it with my kids, and they're like, "What?" I'm like, "Yeah, you know." <laughs> and that's how you know it's memorable. Yes. It was the biggest shock. Yeah. So, yeah. Is this movie 1930s? It's 1939 as well, and it's also directed by Victor Fleming. He did Oz. Wizard of Oz. Really? Truly. Okay, I didn't know that. I have seen little bits of the movie when it's been on TV, but I haven't sat down and watched this movie from start to finish. However, I know the line is quite popular. It is... Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Fred, you go. What shall I go? What shall I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. I haven't watched it from start to finish either, but everybody knows that yeah. line. Isn't it like four hours long? It is. And for another, that's a little bit of trivia. Another bit of trivia is that if the box office receipts were adjusted for inflation, it will be the top grossing movie of all time. According to Guinness World Records, the total gross today would be four billion four hundred and one million three hundred and fifty eight thousand five hundred and fifty four dollars and ninety four cents. Really? Really. Okay, I reckon this has got to be one of the most popular, if not the most popular. Everyone says it. It's been said in TV shows. It's been... It's... Yeah. So I set you up, Concord. The year was 1984. And the director was James Cameron. Again, the movie is The Terminator. I'll be back. Exactly. I'll be back. The ultimate line. Just three words. Yes. And he wanted to say... I will be back. Yeah. And he goes, no, he's a robot. He would probably say it, you know, spot on as, I will be back. Because I'll, I'll just do. And James Cameron said, look, I don't tell you how to act. I'm the writer, director. Just say the line. Yeah. And, yeah. And what a, what a line. I know. What My all-time favourite. I reckon it's got to be one of the most, if not the most popular out of all movie lines now we have honorable mentions as i said at the start there'll be so many lines here and others would be et et phone home yep 1982 steven spielberg film taxi driver uh 1976 you know the line i'll let you deliver <laughs> you talking to me brilliant did that also have Jodie Foster in it? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, the other movie that's probably quite popular as well, now honourable mentions, is Hasta la Vista, baby. Which is on my list as well. Yeah. Terminator 2, Two? 1991. Oh, I said 1992 before. It's 1991. And Forrest Gump. Yeah, it could be a few. <laughs> yeah, it could be a few, yeah. Life's like a box of chocolate. Yeah. And did you? Do we have more for honourable mentions? Do you have? Uh, I have 1987's Predator again. Get to the chopper. Get to the chopper with yes. Arnold. Mm-hmm. And I have one more from 1980, The Blues Brothers. And I'm sure you would have seen this Concord. Dan Aykroyd speaking. Yeah. It's 106 miles to to Chicago. I'll get it right in a second. We've got a full tank of gas a half a pack of cigarettes, it's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. John Belushi, hit it. (laughs) (laughs) 
Brilliant. <laughs> I've got to watch it. I've only seen it once. That's shocking, isn't it? I've got to watch it again. You need to watch it again, Concord. Um, the other one I was going to say was A Few Good Men, Jack Nicholson. You Can't Handle the Truth. Exactly. Very popular. It's been used in other movies. Top Gun with Tom Cruise. I feel the need, the need for speed. Oh, actually, on another Tom Cruise movie, which <laughs> other movies have used, you had me at hello. <laughs> you had me at hello. And it has the Bruce Springsteen's Secret Garden music going. Yeah. And what the, what was the movie? Jerry Maguire. Yes. Jerry Maguire. Uh, great. I didn't mind that movie at all, actually. I thought it was all right. Pretty good. Oh, and of course, show me the money. Cuban Gooding Jr. saying that line. Another popular show me the money. And as I said, we could go on and on. There's so many movie lines that are great. We could go on and on. But look, tell us in the comments if there's some movie lines that you like. Please share it with us. We'd love to hear your comments. And if you're going to comment, please leave them nice and constructive. We're here to enjoy movies and music and hi-fi. And I want to thank my guest, the Frog for coming on the show again thank you and we are still going to watch a movie i had a bit of uh how could you say technical issues with um so we're still going to watch this movie and do our we're going to break it down and revisit the film again and we've got some more topics that we want to share with you but look have a listen to our other podcasts as well and give us a like and subscribe and thanks for coming Thanks, Concord. See you next time.